this won't be your average safety video. Yes, we will discuss in some detail the hazard communication standard in the Right to Know Act, but we're gonna do it in such a way that it's not overwhelming. And with the addition of the globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, we knew companies would need help with their training. But what we didn't know until we took this project on is how much GHS makes sense. There's value to this system. Turns out, workers do want to know the hazards associated with the chemicals they work with. And companies who comply, they'll be more competitive in a global market. But finally, workers will find themselves in a safer environment. Let's put this all in some context. In 1982, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, passed the Right to Know Act. This gave employees the right to know what chemicals they were working with. Hey, what's in my bottle? What the hazards associated with those chemicals are. How can this hurt me? What they needed to wear to protect themselves from those chemicals. How do I do that? How to properly handle and store the material, as well as what to do if something goes wrong, a spill, or worse yet, you need first aid. And these things in a written format are considered a hazard communication or HAZCOM plan. The foundation of these plans, the way the employers got the information for the employees was material safety data sheets. And these were produced by the chemical manufacturers. But seeing this information in such a technical format caused many employers and employees to check out, so to speak. Seeing the sentence, chemical X is a teratogen, means nothing to most workers. But seeing the sentence, chemical X may cause birth defects, means everything to a woman of childbearing age. Chemicals we work with every day can cause cancer, infertility, long-term disability, specific organ damage, lung damage, even death. But it's not the chemicals, it's the way we're using them. So the warnings, the labels, the training, it's all so important. It's not a burden that OSHA and Labor and Industries has asked us to relook at our HASCOM programs. It's a good thing. So we've seen a lot of companies gather and collect the MSDS sheets, hundreds of them, and put them in these binders and have them in the workplace or on the job site. And when we go in to, to train companies and you ask the employees, a lot of the employees know exactly where that binder is. They know exactly where to go find it. You know, they say, oh, it's over in the back corner or it's at the foreman's desk. And so they've seen the binder in the book, but they really have no idea and understand what the individual MSDS sheet is of the product that they're dealing with as far as that they're using, what any of the hazards are. So we really see the need for training for the employees to understand the hazards of the chemicals that they're using in the workplace. But why the need for a globally harmonized system? In the United States, we've known for a long time we could do a better job of informing the workers of the hazards associated with the chemicals they work with. And some systems, like NFPA and HMIS, were developed to visually warn workers about hazards. But no standard format has been required in the past, and companies could do things differently. To further complicate matters, as the world economy is globalized, hazardous chemicals coming across borders has become commonplace. The classification and labeling of those chemicals also varies greatly. I was very happy to see OSHA adopt the Global Harmonization System standard. It turns out there was no standardization prior to that. Even when OSHA adopted their initial chemical hazard communication standard in the early 1980s, they didn't adopt consistent requirements for either labels or for containers or for material safety data sheets. Thus, there was no consistency. In 1992, the United Nations developed a non-mandatory template for global harmonization that would put everyone on the same sheet of music, uh, but it was voluntary. So Federal OSHA finally adopted that global harmonization system in 2013, and the good thing about it, it puts us uh, across all other countries, across multi-cultures, different languages, where everyone now is able to look at 
frame one pictogram of nine different types that they have, what the hazards of the chemicals are, and even if they don't speak English, they can still understand the nature of the hazards to which they're exposed. And so it's not really just the right to know, it's the right to understand. The reality is most, most employers want to be compliant. The problem is, is now you go to look at 164 pages of a lot of legal writ and chemical formulations and it really gets to be overwhelming. Um, so some of these companies think, well, you know, I don't make or store or dispose or distribute chemicals and they don't think it applies to them. Other companies think, well, we're too small of a business or my employees only occasionally use chemicals. And so the problem is, though, they all need to have a written HASCOM plan. And now it has to be GHS compliant. And so we saw the need to make this video to help employers train their employees with this new standard. Washington State employers are required to develop, implement, and maintain for each workplace a written hazard communication program. At a minimum, this must cover the warning systems, labels, safety data sheets, and employee training they will use to communicate the hazards of the chemicals they work with. This written program starts with a list of all chemicals known to be used or present in the workplace. These are not just things you buy in buckets that come with safety data sheets, but maybe byproducts are naturally occurring in the workplace. So we need to give these a unique product identification that's linked back to an SDS sheet. Now this could be a list of the products with a book of printed SDS sheets, or it could be a completely digital system, provided there's no barriers to immediate employee access. This is where technology can really be your friend. It can help you find SDS sheets and a system to organize them and have them available to your workers at their place of work. Whatever system you use though, make sure you implement it as part of your training. That way you can be reasonably sure that your employees have access to the hazards of the chemicals they're working with. The methods an employer will use to inform their employees of the hazards associated with non-routine tasks and unlabeled pipes also need to be part of this written program. We encourage employers to take the time to stop the video to discuss with their employees situations at their workplace that might meet this criteria. Then they should review appropriate SDS sheets. This would really show the effective type of training required in the standard for both the introduction of a new chemical or a new hire into the workplace. The plan must also include the methods and observations required to detect the presence or release of a hazardous chemical in the workplace, such as what kind of monitoring system does the company use? What is the visual appearance or an odor associated with chemicals that the employee should be worried about? And finally, what measures do the employees need to take care of themselves in an emergency? the personal protective equipment required, or the specific emergency response procedures they'll need to follow. The physical, health, simple asphyxiate, combustible dust, pyrophoric gas, and hazards not otherwise classified of the chemicals you work with must be included in some detail in the plan. And yes, I had to read that sentence. <laughs> Just saying written HASCOM plan is enough to throw most small businesses over the edge. Don't do it on your own. LNI and NICASafety.com both have written safe HASCOM plans that you can use in your company. Let me walk you through what should be on that HASCOM plan. First, pick someone to be in charge, a program administrator. Everybody loves a new title. Have them download a free copy and start filling in the blanks. Second, List all chemicals known or present at your workplace. Third, contact the vendor where you bought the product and have them provide you with an SDS or MSDS until 2015. They are required to provide you one and hang a sign saying they can. And finally, 
print a copy and save a digital version under SDS on, on your computer. Now here's the really important part. Once you have the SDS sheet, take the time to look over it. Look over the, the hazards that are gonna be associated with using that chemical or product, and then take the time to go over that with your employees. That could be in a couple different forms. It could either be in a special HASCOM training session you set aside, or at one of your weekly safety meetings. The areas of the SDS you really wanna emphasize on are section two, physical and health hazards. What are the health hazards and physical hazards associated with us using this product in our workplace? Uh, section four, first aid measures. What happens if one of our employees swallows it? What happens if we breathe it in accidentally? What happens if we spill it in or it gets in our eyes, it splashes up in our eyes? And also what happens, what do we do if it absorbs through our skin? Number six, accidental release. What happens if we spill it? How do we clean it up? Is there, is there another emergency issue that's, that comes up with that? Number seven, handling and storage. A lot of these products maybe we can't store next to each other or store in a certain temperature of our building. So that will provide us with that information. And section eight, the PPE section, personal protective equipment. How do we protect our employees when they're using this chemical in the workplace? Our GHS safety data sheet video goes over the 16 sections of the safety data sheet, as well as our GHS pictogram video covers the nine pictograms in detail. And your employees need to watch these as part of their HASCOM training. In the real world, your employees should know the symptoms of overexposure with the chemicals that they work with in the workplace. Headache, dizziness, nausea, skin or eye irritation, difficulty breathing. If you throw up, get out. You need to follow proper procedures. First, go over section four, the first aid measures in the SDS sheet. Second, notify your HASCOM administrator. And third, seek immediate medical attention. So another important aspect of these written HASCOM plans is the container labeling section. Now, if companies buy chemicals and leave them in their original containers, they don't really need to do anything differently. But if they take those chemicals and transfer them into their own containers, they're going to need a GHS compliant label on that. This is because so many accidents happen when people take a chemical, let's say like acetone, and put it in a pot bottle to use it temporarily. Another employee will come by, pick up, maybe drink that pot bottle. Now we have a terrible accident. Under the old standard, you could just write acetone on there, but under the new GHS standard, you'll need to make a label with six components. We really encourage employers to view our GHS labeling video so they get the details on what needs to go on those labels. Many times, multiple employers work on the same job site. They'll have to take the time to share their written HASCOM plans, their SDS sheets, and their container labeling protocols with each other. It doesn't matter who makes the hazard on the job site, but if employees are subject to a chemical hazard, the employers have a responsibility to protect them with these programs. Employers need to review their HASCOM programs yearly. They need to make sure they have updated SDS sheets for the products that they're working with and their employees have access to those SDS sheets. They need to make sure they're providing the appropriate personal protective equipment and that employees have the chance to give feedback on the program. They need to ask their employees, does our HASCOM program work? Do you know the hazards of the chemicals that you're working with? And do you know where to find answers to the specific questions you might have about those chemicals? We're excited because we know the addition of GHS to LNI's HASCOM standard is going to make for safer workplaces. We all have the right to understand the hazards of the chemicals that we work with. So we encourage employers to review this video, the SDS, HASCOM labeling and pictogram videos so that they can take full advantage of a GHS HASCOM program.